بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد imperative for every muslim to know how to properly make wudu and continuing on in our durus uh, of tahara on how to purify ourselves we reach the hadith in umdata ahkam hadith as-sabi' which is the hadith the seventh hadith which illustrates for us the how to make wudu and this is the hadith of uh, Uthman bin Affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and this hadith gives us the full uh, sunnah of how to make our wudu how to purify ourselves for the prayer and prepare ourselves and as we know that the wudu or that purifying self, uh, tahara is the miftah of salat it is the key to prayer it is one of the shurut it is one of the conditions for making salat so therefore it's imperative for us to know and understand this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and try to implement it and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq in that عن حمران مولى عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه راع عثمان دعا بوضوء فأفرغ على يديه من إنائه فغزلهما ثلاث مرات ثم أدخل يمينه في الوضوء ثم تمضمض واستنشق واستنطر واستنطر ثم غسل وجهه ثلاثا ويديه لمرفقين ثلاثة ثم مسها براسه ثم غسل كلتا رجليه ثلاثا ثم قال رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم توضع نحو وضوء هذا وقال من توضع نحو وضوء هذا ثم صلى ركعتين لا يحدث فيهما نفسه غفر الله له ما تقدم من ذنبه Ru'ahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which illustrates for us the characteristics of how to make wudu. Uh, Humran Mawla Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He was the slave, uh, the freed slave or of Uthman bin Affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that he saw Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu uh, ask for a... Uh, a container to make wudu and then he poured it on his hand uh, and he washed him three times again this goes back to the hadith that we studied before about washing our hands and not dipping our hands into the container but rather pouring water and washing our hands outside the container before we put our hands inside of the container so he poured the water on his hands and washed them three times then he entered his right into the water his right hand into the water and then he washed his mouth his nose and he blew out the water then he washed his face three times and his hands or his hands up to his arms up to his elbow ila marfaqain thalatha and he did it three times then he wiped his head and he only wiped his head once then he uh, wiped uh, his both both his legs or he washed both of his legs three times meaning his feet up to his ankles then he said I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam make wudu like the wudu I just made and then he said whoever makes wudu like this wudu then prays two rakat and he doesn't uh, you know get distracted from anything else and, and busy his mind or anything with something else then Allah will forgive him of that which he the sins that he did before and this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this hadith uh, this hadith of Uthman bin Affan and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
the Prophet Sallallahu it's his hadith, but it's a narration by Uthman or uh, Humran, Mawla Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala an, that he illustrated for us how to make the proper and full wudu according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Meaning that there are some things, he, he did it three times. He washed his, his, uh, he washed his hands three times. And that's from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ because it would be permissible to do it once. It's permissible to do it once and your salat is still sahih and your wudu is correct. However, if you want full ajr, you want more ajr, you want to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and have it more complete and more ajr from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you would do it three times as Uthman bin Affan illustrated. And as was the case that the Prophet وسلم, illustrated for him. So he illustrated for us that washing the hands, he washed the hands three times outside of his water container. Then he entered his hands into uh, the water container and he uh, you know, washed his hands. Uh, then, then he made a tamadmada was stanchak. Then he washed his mouth out and he washed his nose out. Uh, and he blew it out. Then he washed his face three times. Uh, and then he cleaned his, ha his hands to his arm three times. And then he wiped his, his head and ran them back and forth uh, three times. Uh, uh, one time, sorry. And then he cleaned his his uh, his feet three times, and then he said, "The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Uh, and then he said, "I saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do this, uh, make wudu just like this." And then he said, "Whoever makes wudu just like this," and then he prays rakat uh, two uh, units of prayer, and he doesn't have hadith and nafs. He doesn't. You know, have any waswas, -was, you know, speaking and, and being distracted. He's concentrated in his prayer, uh, focused in his prayer. Then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him of the sins that he, uh, his previous sins. So for us, it's very important to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and strive to make the uh, wudu according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at all times if possible. Unless we're in a situation, maybe we're restricted on water, we are, uh, or, or something similar to that, then in that case, then maybe we would just do what is sufficient to make our, uh, to, to purify ourselves and to be able to perform the prayer. The ulama, the scholars, they differ and I don't like to get deep into the, the aqwal of the ulama, meaning the, the differences, the ikhtilaf of the ulama, because sometimes that can get us away from just learning how to do some of the basic uh, learning how to practice and, and having some way to follow. It can cause confusion for us. But some issues we just want to highlight that were differences. And one of these particular differences uh, re related to this hadith. اختلاف علماء ذهب الأئمة أبو حنيف ومالك وشافعي وسفيان وغيرهم إلا أن استنشاق مستحب في الوضوء لا واجب. So this is very important that Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik and Imam Shafi'i and Sufyan Thawri رضي الله تعالى رحمهم الله تعالى جميعا May Allah have mercy upon all of them. They held the view that, uh, and other than them, some other scholars, that making istanshak, meaning taking water in the nose and blowing it out, is not an obligation, but rather that it is mustahab, meaning is recommended. So it just gives you an idea on, on how the, the scholars, according to the text, by looking in the text, how sometimes according to their understanding of the language or how they use 
uh, the the language or if they were looking at other factors pertaining to the hadith and some were more looking at the direct text of the hadith how they sometimes had difference of opinion with regards to issues of fiqh issues of jurisprudence so this gives us this should humble us because if these great imams differed on these issues then we should not be so harsh and quick to attack one another over issues related to fiqh that doesn't mean that some issues are, are aren't correct and and some were, were and and some imams were in were not incorrect on this issue but if they were fuqaha they were great imams in the religion in mujtahid then these imams they are going to receive re re reward whether they uh got it correct or not because they strove and they had knowledge and they were they had the position they were mustahiq they had the uh right to make ijtihad in these issues you know, they were striving their best to bring the truth and to abstract the truth from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so they differed with regarding to, for, for a variety of factors. And the point being for us to understand and benefit from this is that we shouldn't be so harsh when we see one of our brothers and sisters uh, holding another view in some issues in fiqh that if we have the evidence and we know which is the strongest evidence then clarify it for them but don't be harsh and if you see that they haven't changed their view the next time you see them don't all of a sudden cut them off and attack them and attack their honor and this and that and the other that's not the way of the fuqaha and that's not the way of ahl islam it's not the way of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah so that's why we ha it's imperative for us to have some sort of understanding of these issues and as we gain more more knowledge to understand why they had the differences and then that puts us in a position to be able to choose from what these great imams have uh, left behind for us to be able to choose what is the, the strongest uh, view in accordance with the nasus but if we don't know the uh, uh, the text we don't know how to understand how to uh, deduce rulings from the text we don't know the waj the, the, the way in which they deduced those rulings. We don't know the qawaid fiqiyya, we don't know the usul of fiqh, we don't know these principles, then we're unable to discern between uh, how they deduce these matters in fiqh. And so that's why we should not be so strong and quick, especially to consider one another innovators over matters of fiqh. So this is imperative for us to understand that those imams, they held the view that what? That taking water in the nose and blowing it out is recommended but not wajib. So that makes a big difference. That makes a big difference in how you practice because if you see someone and you hold that it's wajib, as is the statement of Imam, uh, Imam Ahmed held according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed, it's an obligation to clean out the nose and blow it out. And many of our great uh, scholars in this uh, day, they hold that view as well, and for for other reasons, as it's uh, and there some of their evidences. Let's look at look at some of their evidences. One of the ev evidences that they use is from the ayat where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes in Surah Al-Maidah, "Qala Subhana Fagsulu Wujuhum." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "And wash your faces." This is one of the ayats, uh, the ayat of wudu, of how to wash yourself uh, for for prayer, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordered fagsilu wujuhum. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordered to or, ordered us to wash our faces for prayer. Now then. It goes, well, how do they, where do they get Dalil for the nose? How do they understand this? The Imams that hold the view that uh, it is an obligation to clean the nose, they say, and the Enf, the nose, is part of the face. So that now we have an understanding of how they deduce this hukum of wujub. One of their evidences is that the nose is included in the face, of course, and so therefore, although it wasn't, it, uh, explicitly mentioned, but it's implied in the order and the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the nose is part of the face, so therefore a person must wash their face because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered in there, uh, 
wujuhukum. Allah Taala wa Taala said, and wash your faces. So anytime Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam command something in the text, in the Quran or in the Sunnah, then the asal of that, the foundation of that command or the origin of that command is that what? Is that it's an obligation? That it's something we have to follow. And so therefore, that gives us just an inkling of the debate between those great imams, those great uh, mujtahids, and then those who became before them, because we'll find some of these differences in fiqh between the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And so are you going to be the one to stand up and say, a Sahabi is a mubtidi' because he doesn't follow this call in fiqh? Absolutely not. Anyone who says this, has a, a, a serious defect in their iman and is on the danger, is on the border of heresy and zandaka. So it's very imperative that we understand these issues and we have some sort of uh, um, a, a type of uh, leniency with one another with regards to these thick issues uh, and that and, and humility. This will this should humble us because. Who from amongst us is going to uh, say bad things about these great fuqaha that are the imams of Ahl Sunnah like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala Jameen. And before them, the, other, the Salaf of this Ummah, beginning with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. So if they had differences in the issues of fiqh and jurisprudence issues on how to practice, not in differing, uh, uh, you know, of using, using the nas, if they believed the nas, if they believed the text was sound, then they, they followed it. But sometimes even the one of the reasons might, they might have a difference in fiqh in, in their rulings is because they didn't believe that hadith was a sound hadith. Maybe when they heard the hadith, they felt there was some defect in it. So then they didn't, uh, uh, they didn't act upon it. Because, why? Because they felt the hadith was not sound. And another imam, no, he believed it to be sound or he had stronger evidence to prove that it was sound and he practiced that hadith and made his hukum, his ruling, based upon that hadith. That's just one of the reasons why the scholars uh, differ in some of these issues. And I just wanted to give us a small taste of uh, and, and some basic understanding about these issues. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al nafia wa rizqan tayyibah, wa amalin mutaqabbilin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.